If you talk to women these days about their dating standards, you're going to hear a lot of different answers. Most recently, the internet's been talking about the 666 standard. He is six foot or taller. He makes six figures. He has a six pack. Women want princess treatment without having to treat their man like a prince. They want to dress in whatever provocative way they see fit, go out to clubs, parties, and have their man tolerated. And on top of that, many of them want no kids. And if you're watching viral videos on the internet these days, you know that there is so much more than that. How much should a guy earn for you to date him <laughs> over 500k lightly uncomfortable even though i have shorts underneath i just feel like i'm gonna get a lot of eyes <laughs> let's say i was gonna take you on a date what's the most i should spend the most you should spend the limit is Endless. But what happens when a real modern woman gets to put these dating standards to the test? Will she have a match at the end? Let's watch and find out. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better. Guys, before we get into this video, if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing on this channel, I have a Patreon. The link is in the description down below. Consider supporting if you want to. Now, shout out to Jubilee for actually doing this experiment. Go follow their channel. But a few years back, they put a young woman in a room and told her to tell her dating standards to a group of men, hoping that she would have a match at the end of the video. Now, this video went crazy viral and has recently resurfaced as more people are starting to talk about dating standards. So without further ado, let's watch. Are you hoping to find a match today? Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping not to continue this pattern of very, very bad men. <laughs> Can I already pause and say sometimes, I'm not gonna read too much into it, but sometimes it's a red flag when a woman says, I've just had, you know, bad luck in relationships. I'm constantly finding bad guys. There's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is I'm the person who's attracting men like this and I'm choosing to be with men like this and taking a little bit of self accountability and self responsibility as to why the pattern exists. And often you hear men and women do this. If they have a bad dating history, they take no accountability for themselves and they go, oh, you know, I just have had bad girlfriends or bad boyfriends and it's always the people who have done something to me, never me putting myself on that path. I said I wasn't going to read too much into it and then I did, but I digress. Hi. Okay, there's a lot guys. Oh, wow. Okay, so 20 potential matches. She's very pretty, so we'll see. I Are any of the guys gonna leave? One, two, spare. I love to dance, so I don't like it when I'm with somebody who's a total Debbie Downer or boring and just kind of stands there and doesn't want to dance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's pause. It's interesting that she says, I like to dance, and then in the text message she says, I like to party. That is very different. And partying and dancing are two very different things. You know, if you're a girl who loves to go out and, you know, dance and have a good time, that's one thing. And yeah, you should probably look for a guy who's going to match that energy or else you're constantly gonna live in this state of resentment dating somebody who doesn't do the things that you like to do. Although I'd put dancing very low on my tier list, but I like to party, insinuate something very different. It insinuates you like to be out late at night, probably like to drink, you like to be around a lot of people who are probably doing things that are not too good for their health. And as many of the conversations surrounding dating are going right now, you probably like to be around young single guys and that can bring about a lot of attention that you then have to deal with in your relationship. It's not to say that if you're dating somebody you shouldn't be able to go to parties or anything like that. It's just to say if I was a guy or a girl assessing that in somebody who I was looking to date, it wouldn't be a green flag. Ooh. And she immediately follows it up with, I drink a lot. I drink a lot for me is worse than I like to party. Obviously, this is just my opinion. Alcohol has just sort of become a drug addiction that we've all accepted as a society, I guess, and that we just generally find to be okay. But for me personally, if somebody told me they like to drink a lot on a first date or in a setting like this, I'd be bouncing. <laughs> Okay, 
Hey, she only loses one guy, which I'm suspicious of. I don't know that many guys who really love to dance. I wonder how many of them are actually being truthful that if they were at a club or party, they would be on the dance floor with this girl. I'm very curious about that. But I just want to point out, it's such a weird metric to have. So what if you're dating a guy who's perfect in every other arena, but he just doesn't like to dance? I guess to each their own, to each their own on that preference. Okay, what's next? Okay. I would definitely want someone open-minded, but not a freak. So you shouldn't be into feet, but you know, a little choking is a little fun. Well, you know. Anybody like feet? When did feet become such a big thing? I want somebody to graph this out for me as to like when foot fetishes became something that everybody was talking about because it feels like in recent years, this has become <laughs> a phenomenon. It's a little strange. I don't know what's going on with our society, but I would agree with her. You know, if you're going on into the realm of, of that, maybe, <laughs> maybe we're not a match. Okay, we're gonna keep this PG if we can. <laughs> <laughs> To each their own, right? Your preference is your preference, but that's such an interesting place to draw the line in finding a potential suitor. I have a feeling this video is gonna get even more interesting. Okay, they've stayed. I Surprise. do like them tall because I'm pretty tall for an Asian girl. And when I put on my heels, I would like to still be shorter than my man. So they need to be, I think, at least 5'11", but I, how tall is she? For like six feet tall. Oh, she's five six. B F F R. You're five six, and you need somebody to be at least five eleven or six foot. I was expecting her to be like, oh, I'm five eight, I'm five nine. So if I'm gonna wear like a three or four inch heel, then maybe that would make sense to be looking, you know, for a six foot or above if that's the standard that you have for how you look compared to your significant other. But that's ridiculous. If you're five six, oh, <laughs> I can't. No wonder men are frustrated with stuff like this. If you're a five six woman, you should not be allowed. <laughs> to date somebody who's six foot or higher. Leave that for the tall women who actually <laughs> need somebody who's a little taller than them. It's getting ridiculous. I'm gonna tell a quick little story here. I go on a bit of a tangent, but not exactly. There was a girl over at my apartment, lovely girl, by the way, super fun, super great. I'm not talking bad about her in any sense, but she's 5'5". Five five, and she's talking about this guy that she likes, but doesn't know whether or not she wants to date him, but they get along great. They've been best friends for quite some time. And one of the things that she she mentioned that was holding her off from dating him was that she felt he was too short. And mind you, this girl is 5'5". Five five. I asked her, how tall is the, the gentleman that you are referring to? How tall is he? She says, I kid you not, 5'11". 5'11", which if you're a woman, you can't really even tell the difference between 5'11 and six foot. And she's saying that he's too short <laughs> for her to date when she is 5'5". Five, five. If you're 5'5", five, five, I don't know, your cutoff should be like 5'9". <laughs> We need to start instating a rule here because this is getting wild, it's getting ridiculous, and it's getting a little bit Delulu. And this girl is also giving Delulu because she's 5'6". It's not tall. I'm legit gonna become a red pill content creator at this point with how delusional these dating standards are, which I'm sure there's men who do the same thing and maybe we need to do a video of men with delusional standards because I'm just getting black pilled right now, but wow. Just wow. Uh oh, the guys are freaking out. Let's see. <laughs> Somebody said Thanos is drinking. <laughs> and I bet you a dude who's that funny, you're gonna lose. Boom, because I bet he's not six foot or, or taller. So, I mean. <sighs> It's rough out there. It's rough out there for those short kings. <laughs> Whoa. Like flies dropping, wow. <laughs> 
family. I um, would not want to be with somebody who wants kids within seven years. How old is she? She looks to me to be 24, 25. So you don't want somebody who wants kids within seven years, just assuming that I'm right about her age. So that would be 31 to 32. Huh? <laughs> What happened with height? We already went down that pipeline. Now I get it if you happen to be in your 30s and you just did not meet the right person to marry, right? You shouldn't rush into a situation where you're having kids before you've met the person to have children with. But I think a lot of times I'm hearing girls who are not even single in very successful relationships being like, I'm gonna wait till I'm like 35 to have kids. Some even later than that, which is crazy because it used to be like that is a geriatric pregnancy, which I believe it still is under the current medical standard. This girl, I'm assuming, is very healthy. She seems fit. So, you know, waiting until your 30s is not necessarily a problem. But that mindset shift, I feel like, has happened so quickly to where women who would have been having kids in their mid to late 20s, possibly early 20s for some, are now like, I'm going to wait till my, you know, early 30s. Interesting. I, maybe I'm wrong about her age. Maybe she's like 20 and she's waiting till she's 27 or something like that. And in that case, I take it back. But that's wild. Okay. Kind of selfish about that. I'm only willing to share your love with a pet. She's trying to be a cat mom, dog dad type thing or whatever. I love kids. I've been an aunt since I was 10, so I'm like a natural around babies and kids. But I want to really just share a love with somebody that's so great and it's all about loving each other before we can you know, bring somebody else in the world. I think you should be mentally stable as well, financially stable, because you're going to be responsible for shaping their future. It's kind of a big pressure because you could really f somebody up in the head if you're not there. And I take that really seriously. I think that's that's a valid concern to have and it's a valid thing to be thinking about how you're going to affect the child that you bring into the world and taking that very seriously. I would argue that seven years is sort of an arbitrary number. I wonder what she's doing to come to that conclusion of seven years being the timeline that she's willing to have kids. It's fine, we shall see. Okay. One guy leaves, okay. You know what, breaker. I have a younger brother and anybody younger than me, I just automatically think of my brother, so. Okay, we're gonna find out how old she is. She's 24. Like, they could be the hottest person in the room, and if they tell me they're even a month younger than me, I'm just like, oh, I just see my brother and it's like, oh. Can you be so for real right now? So for, I get it to a certain extent, yeah, when you have a younger brother, you might just compare uh, guys who are of similar age to him, but you have to have a little bit of nuance in that there's going to be guys of all different ages who act in so many different ways, who have different levels of maturity, and to just completely lop off a whole, you know, group of individuals that could be very good for you, could treat you well, could be extremely mature, simply because you won't date somebody even a month younger than yourself. It's only going to harm you in the long run, you know, to have that sort of view towards the people that you're dating, in my opinion. Would not date my brother. Well, yeah. We would hope that you wouldn't date your brother. <laughs> That's why these guys are different. Okay, she says, I'm 26. 26 in July, and this was a while ago, but anyway, she's 26. So she didn't wanna have kids for seven years, meaning 33 was when she was waiting at the very least to have kids, which just go back to my prior commentary on that. Oh, see, look, there we go. <laughs> Chopping them down like trees at this point. She says, I'm gonna die alone. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Ooh, and there they all go. <laughs> you gotta be single for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that was rude. He said you're gonna be single for a while. Hey, I pointed out a few things that I think in my opinion are unrealistic as far as her dating standards. Now, maybe she's come to terms with that now that all of the guys have left and maybe this is one of those wake up call moments where she can look within herself and go, you know what? If out of 20 guys, not a single one match with me, that might not be the best odds and maybe I need to rethink my standards. Now, mind you, it's not the biggest dating pool, 20 guys. Uh, if she had even had one, that would be, you know, five percent but she didn't even get one she got zero zero percent so you'd think this would be a moment of reflection 
Final thoughts. How many guys did you think would be left? I thought there would be maybe four guys left, <laughs> but there were none. Mm. So today I learned that uh, my criteria is <laughs> not, I guess, easy as I thought it was, but I'm okay with that because I don't, like these are values and things that I don't want to bend and change right now, so. What about not dating somebody under six foot is a value? <laughs> <laughs> what about not dating somebody who is even a month younger than you is a value? I can understand standing firm on, you know, what you value in terms of family and not wanting to have kids. That's something that you don't want to be dating somebody who is not on the same page as you on. I can even understand some of her more personality based characteristics. Like I want a guy who wants to dance and party and drink, because if you get with somebody who's incompatible with that and it's maybe a homebody who doesn't like to drink or party, resentment is going to be built up in your relationship and you're just going to come to clash. But some of her height-based standards and the, the other stuff regarding the age, I think we can start to rethink that and maybe open up the pool a little bit. Because she said she was expecting four men to be sitting there at the end of the day, which means she thought she was going to be doing 20%. She was going to be bagging 20% of guys with the standards that she put out. Just couldn't possibly be true. Even with the height standard alone, which she put in the text message would be 5'10", but really she wanted to say a six foot that lops off, you know, a good majority of guys. Let's see, what, what else did she learn? Are those values, as she calls them, <laughs> going to change? I used to really beat myself up in my past relationships after they ended because I felt like I wasn't good enough. <laughs> but um, I think I'm at a place in my life right now where I know what I want and there's nothing wrong with having these standards. You shouldn't have to bend your values and what you want to please somebody else. Okay, I'd venture to say the lesson went unlearned. <laughs> But that's okay, you know? I will say she seems like a perfectly sweet girl. She's attractive. I don't think she's gonna have trouble finding somebody to date necessarily or finding guys that are interested in her. It's just to say that if those standards, some of which I personally deem to be unrealistic, are maintained, I don't know how it's gonna work in the long term for somebody like her. But again, she's got a lot going for herself. We will see where she lands. There's a lot of much worse off women who have the very same unrealistic standards that she she has, and if she's having a hard time finding a match in this video, I can't imagine what it's like for some of the other modern women that we've seen in said viral videos talking about their 666 standards. I'm in a relationship currently, but if I were in this video and I was asked about things that I value in a person, I would be asking much more hard hitting questions. I would be getting into things like religion, how you treat your significant other, what are your core values as an individual, how do you treat other people, are you leading your life with passion. Getting bogged down with things like how tall are you or how old are you or how much do you like to drink, I think it's just far less important than what are your actual core values. And it seems like she has that confused because she views her dating standards as values when really not much of what she said has anything to do with personal values. Now, I don't think this young woman's going to die alone, but I think she might have a little bit of trouble finding a guy who can meet every single marker that she placed in this video. But I'm curious to hear what your dating standards are. Did her list resonate with you? Did my list resonate with you? Drop it in the comments down below. As always, I encourage healthy debate, so duke it out, but do so respectfully. And if you like this video, like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a video for you guys, which is every single day. And I'll see you next time. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better.